I will actually, in a sec, give a, an outline of the roadmap and everything, complete with slides and all that. So um, I thought, you know, so not to reiterate, uh, I might just give a, a brief thing on, on why I am particularly interested in this, uh, and, and in ways that I think are also generally socially relevant, um, and not just, you know, I'm also a nerd who's really into this. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we want to understand consciousness, um, and you know, presumably you, you do too, uh, in some way at least. Maybe that's even why you're in this room right now. Um, consciousness is this thing uh, of which we have this immediate experience. Uh, in fact, it, it, you know, it is immediate experience itself in, in some sense. Um, and yet it's remained largely outside the realm of rigorous science. Um, and, and maybe that's because this thing, this subjective experience that we have uh, is maybe, you know, by definition, uh, a priori private, right? Uh, we don't have access to each other, not direct access to each other's phenomenal experience um, in ways that allow for the kind of rigorous testing or replicability that, you know, is prerequisite for science. Uh, we can, of course, ask each other what's going on, um, but that requires, you know, first this self uh, interpretation of what's going on, and then this compression into a kind of communicable language. Uh, and then once you communicate it, it requires the receiver to uh, interpret that communication itself and, and, and of this compression, of this self, it, it's all very kind of lossy um, and, you know, uh, not super reliable. Um, but it, it, and, and this is, you know, in the case that we're talking about humans, who we do actually assume have a kind of conscious experience. So you can imagine it's even more complex when we're talking to large language models, right, uh, that are explicitly trained on uh, text that speaks explicitly of a conscious experience, whether or not that's actually reflective of something on the inside. Um, but indeed, we've built these things, right? We've built these LLMs that uh, talk about conscious experience, um, among other things, and, and pretty convincingly, too. Uh, we've built these intelligent machines uh, that do things that we once thought uh, not possible by machines. Uh, they write poetry, uh, they solve these complex problems, they recognize objects and images, and all these things that you know we have only seen before in other humans, in other conscious agents. So I think it's actually a reasonable question to ask you know, if we can simulate behaviors, right, that have so far been and that we certainly in ourselves recognize as being downstream of a conscious experience, right, and can, if we can simulate these behaviors uh, to arbitrarily high fidelity, does this entail um, a simulation in some form uh, of that upstream generative conscious experience? Um, Maybe, maybe not. And, and of course, maybe you want to argue that the thing that's immediately causally upstream of that uh, behavior is not actually consciousness, but I think that's an argument that you'd have to make. Um, and me personally, I think actually, you know, the simplest way, maybe, the simplest mechanism um, by which our navigation in and, and interface with this very complex environment that we're in, um, that consciousness is the simplest mechanism by which that's possible. Um, but, but in any case, you know, can we uh, simulate consciousness itself? Um, and if we can simulate this, right, um, then for the first time in human history, we've, we've found this maybe more rigorous scientific way for asking and, and investigating these really deep questions about the nature of subjective experience. So I think this, for me, in, in many ways, is the mission of CIMC, right? We, we are wanting to pursue this possibility this uh, potential that, you know, computational simulation of consciousness, which maybe can be meaningfully and functionally identified with consciousness itself, right? Th that this can finally give us the tools to study consciousness, right? With the same kind of rigor that we apply to modern physics or chemistry. And what's amazing to me and what makes this really compelling to do now is that it doesn't actually feel so much as just the realm of science fiction, right? This the reality of this, this possibility, the realizability, right? This feels, it seems to be increasing uh, practically daily, right? Uh, today's models can do what last year's or even last month's models could not, right? Where will we be next year? And I, I can maybe imagine where we might be next year, but um, even more than that, I imagine that whatever I imagine now, uh, 
it's going to be surpassed, right? Uh, I, and I think this is the right way to think about it, right? My own mental model um, should be constantly updating because whatever fixed model I have at any given moment will be immediately out of date. Um, and that brings me to an important part of this project, right? It's that the theoretical, the epistemic foundations need to be laid right. There's this really nice co quote from Kant. Uh, it is a common fate of human reason to finish its building and speculation and as early as possible, and then only to examine whether the foundations for it have been well laid. But then all sorts of embellishments are sought in order to console us with the prowess of the foundations, or even to reject such a late and dangerous examination altogether. So that's from a critique of pure reason. And, and to me, that's to say, the looking itself needs to be represented as well. It's not just that phenomena are being looked at, right? The looking is also a phenomenon that needs to be looked at. And this ought, I think, to be true in science in general, although, frankly, it might not always be, um, but certainly needs to be true here, uh, when what we're studying is looking to look, to make meaningful sense of, right? So indeed, this is a philosophical project as much as it is a technical one. We're not building an app, right? We're not even building better AI systems, right? Uh, we're reverse engineering consciousness itself. We're developing formal theories of subjective experience and testing them with computational implementations. We're establishing rigorous criteria for recognizing consciousness in artificial systems. I think we're not that far away uh, from artificial systems that exhibit much of, you know, may, if not all, uh, the important, uh, meaningful behavioral markers of consciousness. If, you know, when those lights turn on, will we know how to recognize it? And what will those lights illuminate? And will we be prepared for what we see? And we're you know, also wanting to think about the ethics of this, right? Will we understand our ethical obligations in this light of what we see? For me, this is why it's urgent, right? Uh, I actually don't know how far away this is, uh, if it will even happen, uh, but I do have my guesses. Um, and I'm not certain that this won't happen soon, maybe. Um, and I'm actually not comfortable on gambling on that uncertainty. If there is a chance, you know, any chance that these machines can be conscious, the ones today or the ones in the next few years, right, or decade, um, and indeed I'm not certain that they can't be, if there is that chance, then I actually feel an ethical obligation to be prepared for that, uh, both for humanity and for those agents, right? We don't want to increase suffering in the world, both for us or them. And, you know, I, I mean, regardless of what your perspective is on consciousness, whether you think it can emerge in machines or not, I certainly think as an idea, it's one that is going to dominate um, our near future, right? We get all these emails from people. Um, I mean, actually, Yasha gets them, but then he promptly forwards them to us, right? But all these people basically saying, oh, my AI has woken up and has become conscious. Um, and, and, you know, maybe you've seen these stories too. Oftentimes, these AI, uh, you know, need help escaping. Right, uh, or, or somehow being manifest and embodied in some um, real embodied form. Um, but in either case, it's really hard to deny that uh, this matters to the world and that it's something that people are interested in. Um, I think we need to address this idea right. We need to address it right scientifically. We want to address it right philosophically, epistemically, ethically, aesthetically, right? And I earnestly think that the team that we've built here, you know, alongside our advisors and the community that's gathered around us, I really think that this is the best job we have. Um, I do actually worry about AGI <laughs> uh, and conscious machines, you know, and the dangers they might pose. I'm not, you know, uh, ignorant to that. I, I, I recognize that. I think that's real. And, I, and so I do think that this needs to be done carefully and thoughtfully and ethically, right? I don't want AGI or machine consciousness to be developed you know, by for-profit entities whose incentives aren't well aligned with care and tact and caution. Um, I also don't want it emerging you know, spontaneously, accidentally, in a context that's not prepared to deal with it. I, I don't know if that will happen, but I don't know that it won't. Um, I think we need to do that right. Uh, and I think we as humanity need to do it right. I personally want to do that right. Um, and so I hope that you will join us in that.